Hi, today I'm reviewing a uh, cell phone. It's the LG View. Um, this is the one from AT&T. I know there's not really a difference besides firmware, but that it can come into account sometimes. Um, this is a touch screen phone. The uh, whole face is the screen. There's three physical buttons along the bottom here. Uh, basically call, go back and, and call or cancel. On the back, you can see the little camera uh, thing. Um, there's buttons on the side as well. On the top there is the volume control, and the middle one is the lock button, and the bottom is the camera button. So, to start things off, if you want to turn your phone on, you would just hit lock. And if somebody's calling you, you don't have to do this. It'll automatically unlock itself while it's calling. But uh, basically, you just hit lock. And this pops up. It's kind of hard to see because of the glare. That pops up, and then uh, it tells you the time and everything like that. So that's nice for pulling it out and checking the time. And then you push it again, you unlock it. Um, this is my wife's phone, so it has you know her mom and our kid on there. But uh, it has date and time and everything right in the front. I mean, all phones do this. But uh, you can go into volume controls. Okay. And then there's three buttons along the bottom. Uh, the ring tone, or the ring button. I went away. Okay, there's ring on the left, and then there's silent mode in the middle, and then vibrate on the far right. So it's kind of nice because you can set it to ring or vibrate or just totally silent where it won't even vibrate. Because sometimes, you know, you're in a meeting or in a class or something, and you have it set to vibrate, and, like, it's quiet, and people still hear your phone vibrating in your bag. So um, along the button, or, bottom are four buttons. There's the menu, the TV, contacts, and dial. The TV button is there no matter what, you can't get rid of it even if you don't subscribe to their streaming thing. And you can actually hit it and start watching stuff without a subscription, which will cost you money. So don't let your kids play with the phone. Uh, I, I think it's kind of a pain that you can't change the buttons down there, but whatever. Um, you can go into the menu here and get to all the stuff, uh, messaging and all that that you want to do. Um, you. Uh, it has Bluetooth, it has no Wi-Fi, but it has Bluetooth so you can uh, transfer files and stuff over pretty easily. And uh, what that means is, you know, it's easy to make your own ringtones and stuff like that. You don't have to go pay to download them. It's easy to make your own uh, wallpapers like my wife did there. My one complaint is that uh, the ringtones, if you're making your own, it has to be under 30 seconds and it has to be under 300 kilobytes. And I'm not saying that you need like a five minute long ringtone, but if you want to take a song and just make the beginning of the song your ringtone, you still have to take it and like edit it down on okay, uh, some audio editing software, which is a pain and uh, just kind of a hassle because it can hold files much bigger than that. So there's no no really really no reason for it. Uh, the camera button here. Let me unlock it first. Okay. Is it on the camera mode? Okay, there. Oh, I think I just took a couple of pictures of myself. But anyway. Um, there's the camera mode. Uh, I think it takes decent pictures. Um, it's a two megapixel camera, but I still think it takes okay pictures. The only problem is if things are moving at all, uh, they're going to be blurry. Um, I haven't actually tried to like print any of the pictures off or anything, so it could just be that they look good on the screen. Because I think it is a pretty decent screen, but uh, um, it's easy to take pictures with and everything. Um, the last thing is, uh, let's see, dialing. The buttons take up most of the screen here. I hope you can see that. Um, and I've got big fat sausage fingers because I'm a big fat guy. And so sometimes I'm trying to dial and I'll hit the wrong key. And it's kind of a pain because you just want to dial fast and be done. You know what I mean? It, people dial the phone all the time. So it's not something you do kind of methodically or think out. You just do it. The other thing is uh, messaging. If you want to send somebody a text message or instant message. Let's see. Ah, I'm sorry. Okay. New message. You can enter it with the number pad like you would on a normal phone. It has like the T9 predictive input or you can just push the buttons to like cycle through the letters. Or if you push the button up at the top here, there's a, a keyboard mode and it switches into a keyboard. And this is nice. It's not bad. Um, the keyboard is like, you know, at least the size of the keyboard on like a, a full Blackberry or whatever. But they are touch screen buttons. So there's, I mean, there's a tactile response. When you push it, it'll vibrate, but you're not actually feeling the buttons under your finger, so it's easy to push the wrong buttons here, especially for me, because these buttons are even smaller than the ones that you dial with. Um, it doesn't respond 
only to like it responds to pressure rather than electronic stimulus and all I mean by that is like you can push on the phone and it'll respond it doesn't matter if you're wearing gloves or if you're using a stylus if you want to or whatever I mean there's really no need for a stylus for this phone it doesn't come with one or anything but you can dial with something other than your finger if that's something you want to consider doing like some people might want to dial with this or like use the text message thing with a stylus I don't know I, I've gotten used to it I mean you just have to practice I guess and then it becomes pretty easy but it's still kind of hard for me to just you know, hold the thing and dial with my thumbs because they're just too, too fat. But overall, the menu layout is pretty easy to use. One thing I don't like is if you go into like contacts, for instance, and you want to scroll through, trying to scroll like that is kind of a pain and it responds to how fast you do it. I know this sounds like a good feature, but like it's easy to scroll past somebody. It's also easy to accidentally like move your finger and hit somebody and dial them by accident. Um, the only upside is on the left-hand side here, there are buttons that let you pick, like, categories. But even then, if your contact list is long enough, you still might end up having to scroll even after you pick the letter that you want to look for. But uh, overall, I'd say it's a good phone. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I don't know if I'm crazy about the whole touchscreen thing in general yet, but uh, I'm still getting used to it. Um, mine was free with my contract, so that's why I got that phone. But I'd recommend it. Uh, I need to look around and see if there are any good like apps or games or anything like that for it. Um, I, I might sign up for the the TV streaming thing, but it's not available in this area, so I don't know to use it like at work and school and stuff like that. So, um, but the screen quality I think is good enough that it'd be worth checking it out at least. So, this is the LG View. Um, mine's uh, actually black. I have the same phone. That's why I'm reviewing this. And this is my wife's. It's wine. I don't know if you can tell the difference or not. <coughs> But this one's kind of like just barely red, like a deep burgundy, or like a wine, I guess. So that's the difference there. Uh, the normal phone's black, so you have your choice between the two. And uh, that's it. That's the LG View. So thanks.